This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. These are the four keys that we're talking about for uh, getting, getting, uh, making our finances extraordinary. Key number three is that you have to have the right job. Oh, y'all went, <laughs> don't we all? You have to have the right job. Well, yeah, easier said than done. Yeah, but I want you to take a look at your job through what the Bible says. Look at your job through what the Bible says. We're going to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and start with verse 8. If you see the poor oppressed in a district and justice and rights denied, don't be surprised at such things. For one official is eyed by a higher one, and over them both are others still are higher still. You know, we're talking about this hierarchy. Sometimes it's just you're being oppressed by the man. You're being oppressed by the corporation, by the business. The increase from the land is taken by all. The king himself profits from the fields. Whoever loves money never has money enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. This too is meaningless. As goods increase, so do those who consume them. It's like this vicious cycle. And what benefit are they to the owner except to feast his eyes on them? The sleep of a laborer is sweet, whether he eats little or much, but the abundance of the rich man permits him no sleep. Oh, that's interesting. I have seen a grievous evil under the sun. Wealth hoarded to the harm of its owner, or wealth lost through some misfortune so that when he has a son, there's nothing left for him. It happens both ways. Sometimes it's just a, you know, so a person causes his own demise because of the way he handles his money. Sometimes it's just something happens. There's a disaster of some sort, and you're, you, you suffer the consequences of that. Verse 15, naked a man comes from his mother's womb, and as he comes, so he departs. He takes nothing from his labor that, can carry, that he can carry in his hand. This, too, is a grievous evil. As a man comes, so he departs, and what does he gain since he toils for the wind? All his days he eats in darkness with great frustration, affliction, and anger. Then I realize that it is good and proper for a man to eat and drink and to find satisfaction in his toilsome labor under the sun during the few days of life God has given him, for this is his lot. You know what that verse is saying, by the way? Love what you do. We'll take a look at it here in just a moment. Moreover, when God gives any man wealth and possessions and enables him to enjoy them, to accept his lot and be happy in his work, this is a gift of God. Now, let's take a look at this passage and break it down and see what the Bible says about your job. Let's find out if you've got the right job. Let's find out if you've got the right job. The key thing that we need to understand is, is what is your product? You are your own product. I mean, let's face it, you are your product. But what is the product? What is it that you are dispensing, if you will, to your employer? You know, you, don't, you need to begin to understand that you don't have a job, you have a product. And all you're doing is selling your product back to your employer. That's what you're doing. If you are a secretary, you are selling your secretarial skills back to your employer. If you're a salesman, you're selling your sales skills to your employer. If you're a voice talent, you're selling your voice to your employer, your clients. That's all you're doing. You're, you're taking your product and selling it back to a company. Well, how much is your product worth? The company that, you, that is paying you for your product, how much is it really worth to them? And is your product really worth more than they're paying? You need to take a long look at that. How much is your product that you're dispensing to your employer how much is it really worth? Are you delivering, here's the other question, are you delivering the product that you're getting paid for? If your product is worth, say, 10 bucks an hour, but you're only delivering five bucks an hour, then you're probably well paid. But are you delivering the product that you're getting paid for? Now, in Ecclesiastes, starting with verse eight, verse, uh, chapter five, verse eight, let's start with taking and breaking down your job. First of all, is your job honest? Is your work honest? Uh, verse 8, eight says, uh, is it fair? Are you doing that which is fair? Is your work fair to others? Is it fair to the, to the community? Is it fair to your employers? Is it fair to your other employees? Is it fair? Verse 9, is it legal? Because <laughs> if you're out there selling drugs, I can tell you right now if you're out of bounds. You know, is what you're doing legal? Is what you're doing legal? Verse 10, is it motivated by greed? 
This is one of the biggest problems I had when I was in, in, uh, in radio. Because I'll tell you right now, corporate radio is just nothing but flat out pig greed. That's just the bottom line. And I hope some of them hear me say that. Because that is exactly what it has become. All they intend to do is take the business and get all they can out of it without regard to its employees. They're just looking for the cash flow so that they can go sell more stock on Wall Street and get fat themselves. And so this is, if your job is motivated by greed, you're out of bounds. As a Christian, you are out of bounds. Verse 11 says, are you doing quality work? Is the work quality that you do? Is there real quality in what you're doing? Do you have integrity with your work? Then we pick up with verses 12 through 17. What does your work accomplish? What are you really accomplishing? Verse 12, does it really improve your quality of life? Verse 13, do you make too much money? <laughs> no. <laughs> really? Do you make too much money? Verse 14, are you caught in the, what we call the loss cycle? Where everything you do, no matter how hard you work, it just seems like a loss comes along. And then another loss. And you work hard and there seems to be more. And then all of a sudden it seems like, oh, great, finally the light's starting to shine. And then there's another setback and there's another loss. Malachi teaches, by the way, and this is taught in another uh, number of places in the Bible, that sometimes the reason there's this loss is because, and, and the way God teaches in Mal or not Malachi, but uh, Haggai, the way he teaches it in Haggai is that he said, you worked hard and you took what you had, and I took it and I just blew on it, and it was gone. The labor was gone. All that you worked for was gone because I have withheld the blessing. All that you did was for naught because I've withheld the blessing. <laughs> What God is simply saying in Haggai is that uh, are you, you're, sometimes you're in a law cycle because God has withheld a blessing in your life. God has said, you know what, you're not doing it my way and until you learn to trust me and do it my way, there's going to be a law cycle in your life. Are you, verses 14 through 16, are you providing properly for your family? A person who doesn't provide for their family is really out of bounds scripturally. And, you know, I... I, I I, I've talked with a number of couples and a number of, of uh, separated couples and you know he's just he's not paying the bills or she's not paying the bills or she's not carrying her weight or he's not carrying his weight and doing and there's this whole thing where that person is committing fraud the Bible teaches that that's fraud that person is not living up to what they agreed to at the beginning of the marriage you know when you made your vows I agree to do this and this and this and this and this and if they're not living up to that that's fraud the Bible teaches that as fraud and if you're not providing properly for your family not just financially but in all realms all of those things that you committed to you have violated your stand with God the commitment that you made to God the vow that you made to God and sometimes it's important to just simply say look if you're not going to provide for your family the verse of Scripture here says that you are in trouble you are in, you are violating God's standards. So I'm just going to step back out of the way and let God deal with you. I'm going to step back out of the way. Sometimes you have to get out of the way so that God can deal with that person. Are you providing properly for your family? Uh, ver, uh, verse 17 says, is your work overstressing you? <laughs> really? They have to ask that question? Of course. Is your work overstressing you? Because God doesn't, God doesn't say, I just want you to never have any stress. But when it becomes overstressful, then you're violating what the concept is or the principle is of the scripture, what God wants to accomplish in and through your life and what he wants to accomplish in and through your work. Verses 18 and 19 says, is your work satisfying? In other words, verse 18 says, are you getting the most out of life? Are you? Are you getting the most out of life? Do you realize that the Bible, look at what the Bible, what that verse says. God says, I want you to enjoy life. I want you to get the most out of life. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. God says, I do want you to enjoy life. And if you're not enjoying life, something's wrong with this picture. God says, I want you to enjoy it. And I want you to enjoy life. So, and, and that includes enjoying your job, that you can enjoy life. God says, I want you to enjoy it. Verse 19 says, just ask the question. Uh, are, are you getting the most out of life and are you enjoying life? Are you really enjoying your life? You see, it's important for, you, for us to understand that if you, if you don't have the right job, then, and, and you, maybe you've seen that just from the scripture, God says, it's okay. I can take you to some place where I want you to work. I can take you to a position where I want you to be. I do have a plan for you. I do have a purpose for you. 
I don't want you to be stuck in a place where you're miserable and you hate and they hate you and you're never appreciated. God's, that's not God's way of doing things. What makes you think that God wants you to be stuck there for the rest of your life? God says, I can make it better. And he can either change the circumstances where you are right now, or he can take you to a better place. God can do that. And you just need to simply say, God, where do you want me? I, I see what's going on here. Is this where I'm supposed to be? And if it isn't, then either God, you change it, change me, change the circumstances, or put me where you want me. Because I just simply want to be where you want me. Do I have the right job?